Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Jonathan and I'm a clerical substitute in Austin, Texas. So today's video is the first of a four-part segment I am calling Teacher Top Tips. And basically these are videos in reflection of my experiences, even though I'm just a clerical substitute, that relate to education. In this first video to start, I figure we talk about why go into a career that involves education. Why become an instructor? And the first essential question you need to think about if you're considering a career in education is why? Why do you want to be a teacher? Or why do you want to be a sub or whatever position? Why, and this is mainly about teachers, this video, why do you want this to be your career? Is it something you may like? Are you doing it for the money? Or are you doing it for, you know, something that brings you joy in life? I mean, first of all, you need to identify why you're doing it. Second thing you need to take into consideration is your pay rate. How much money are you going to make every year? Think about your living situation first. Are you living in a duplex, an apartment? Do you have a house? Are you married? Do you have kids? And you need to take your financial situation. And if you are married, how much money does your spouse make? You know, will they make more or less money than you will if you're a teacher? So go online and look up your your teacher pay rate for the district you would get a job in not just your state's pay rate but look at the specific district and my district pays roughly varies I believe it's about 42 42 thousand a year and as opposed to other districts that pay more or less like overall, in general, the state of Texas pays 41 to 42 a year, whereas our neighboring state, Oklahoma, pays only 32 a year. But it has to do with the economical situation of the state. Oklahoma, lower pay rate, but they're not as expensive of a state uh, as Texas. And then California, pay rates more because it's a more expensive state than Texas and all that. The second thing you need to take into consideration are the requirements for your job. Do What do you need in general? So requirement number one, and this is for the state of Texas. So for me, I'm pursuing a career of becoming an actual teacher one day. I'm not just going to stay a clerical sub because I don't want to work behind a desk for forever. So Because that's basically what I am right now. As clerical subs, we don't really sub in the classroom environment. We mostly work in the office, but if we need to sub in a classroom environment, we can. Next thing up is an actual substitute teacher, and then after that is a teacher teacher, which is what I hope to be eventually. So, anyway, uh, requirements will vary but in the state of Texas first thing you need to get is a bachelor's in the subject you are considering teaching so for me I'm considering English so I need to get a bachelor's degree in English language arts a second thing you need in the state of Texas is to complete an educators preparation program and essentially what that is basically like a student teaching program so you do this through your college you get assigned to school and you become a student teacher at that school you're assigned a class that fits your subject so for me I would be assigned to an English class and I don't know it's weird you know I'm already a sub yet I haven't been a student teacher I'll explain that later but Anyway, you're assigned to a class of your subject of choosing and you'll be a student teacher there for however long you're required, you know. 
six weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks. The third thing you need to do is pass your certification exams. In Texas, we have more than one exam that teachers have to take. The fourth thing you need to do is submit a state application for a teaching position. And the last thing you need to do is undergo general criminal background checks and fingerprinting. Then you go and get your badge and apply to work at a certain school and boom. You're a teacher. Doesn't sound all that hard, but it's a lot of work. I mean, ask, you know, I just hear about this and I'm thinking, I got a lot ahead of me. The next thing you need to consider is choosing what grade level you want to teach. Do you want to teach elementary, middle school, high school, college, or university? So that's something you need to take in to consideration. Do you work well with little kids? Do you work well with students that are in grades 6 through 8? That's middle school. By definition of our district, grades 6, 7, and 8 is middle school. I know some districts, grade 6 is still considered uh, elementary school, but in my district, grade 6 is middle school. Anyway, and then high school, 9 through 12, will you work better with teenagers or college will you work best with young adults or anyone of any age because college you know you'll see some people in their 20s and you'll see some people in their 50s you know my Spanish 2 class I actually had a classmate who was in his early 60s at that time uh, and he was just taking that class for fun he was retired and bored but uh, you need to take that into strong consideration because you don't want to end up teaching uh, at a grade, teaching a grade that you have no uh, preparation for, that you are not prepared for. Do not teach elementary if you're more prepared for high school and vice versa. You know, if you're more prepared to work with teenagers, work with teenagers. If you're more prepared with the little kids, work with the little kids. The next thing you need to think about is choosing what subject you want to teach. Do you want to teach English, math, science, social studies, a second language, the creative arts, or do you want to teach health and PE if you want to be a coach? If you want to be a coach, obviously, health and PE is the route, but you also have to teach a core subject, and at the school that I mainly work at, it's almost always social studies, almost always world history or U.S. history. But you need to take in consideration, you need to teach a subject you have a lot of knowledge and background in, something that you ace elementary, middle school, high school, college, and university. Don't go in saying, hey, I have a degree in biology, but I'm going to teach U.S. government or Texas government or uh, psychology and sociology. No. If you got a degree in biology, you need to teach biology. And the last thing I want to talk about is changing your career. Teaching is not for everybody, so if you decide to change your career, that's totally fine. But if you're in college when you make this decision, do the smart thing. See if the credit you've earned in college transfers to another major. Like if you're focusing on becoming a biology teacher and you've taken all these science classes, Will they transfer to a new career choice? Well, if you like biology so much, you can go for being a field biologist. Almost all of those classes should count towards a degree in becoming a wildlife or field biologist or whatever. Um, I'm a science nerd and an English nerd, so you'll hear me talk about both. Uh, throughout all of these videos. That is it for episode one of Teacher Top Tips. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to give this video a like. Share it with fellow teachers if you are a teacher watching this. 
Comment down below what you want to see next. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, I'm not going to stop at episode four. I will continue. I only have four planned out right now, though. And also, subscribe to my channel. I will post new content every single week. I want to also announce episode two will come out on May 1st, episode three, May 8th, and the fourth and final episode of season one will come out on May 15th. So yeah, thank you for tuning in and watching, and I will see you guys later.